fun with Edo Podcast. Hello everyone, it's Podcast Edo, back at it again with another video, and for today's guest that I have interviewed for my first start of 2024 is Blue the Robot. So here is the interview right now. Hello everyone. It's Talking Fun with Edo. Back at it again with another episode with our 36th guest, Blue the Robot. Hello, man. <laughs> Hello. Welcome. I'm glad to be here. Glad to be here. Great. Glad to see you too. It's a great way to even start off the new year. And uh, how are you doing today, my friend? I'm good. How about yourself, man? I'm doing good too. So as usual, like I got some questions and the first thing we're going to start off with is uh, where are you from and how do you even get the name uh, Blue the Robot? Yeah, uh, so I'm originally from Florida, uh, West Palm Beach, South Florida, mm. uh, and I got the name uh, due to originally wanting to make it a video game character. Uh, I wanted to actually make a game from scratch. A uh, little platformer. So I drew a character, and he had, it was a little robot character with big eyes, and he had a blue tie. Mm. So that was kind of just blew the robot. Kind of just started from there. Was he gonna be like a businessman? <laughs> like, I don't know what the the premise was too much. I mean, it was definitely. It was, this was back in like 2013. I was like, I think mm. uh, I was like a, a senior in high school. All and right. I wanted to uh, make something based off the artwork of little inferno i don't know if you ever heard of that game before okay um, but yeah it was it was definitely like that that style of artwork that was like just very 2d cartoony and uh yeah he was originally my, my even my cousin helped me make a uh like a prototype where Ooh. it went from 2d to 3d and he was running around the office collecting files and he would jump and stuff like that. The tie had physics to it and everything. And then, yeah, you know, then yeah, that to, definitely it's like, sounds I think, like it would be a business robot. <laughs> yeah, and it was like the premise was like you have to hurry up and get the files and get it to the boss's office before a certain time. Mm. So that was just was, you know, was it going to be like a video game or like? You yeah, know? no, it was going to be. It was going to be like 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 you know back when uh, uh when what was it like Steam Greenlight was a thing. Yeah, it was like okay. you know super early on or yeah, yeah. or back when like. People were getting their games on like Xbox 360 arcade. Right, you know? right. The um the so. green lid before. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's even like a mm -hmm. good video from uh YouTuber. I'm not sure if you heard of him, uh Vince Vintage, that he was like talking about uh, yeah. Xbox yeah. hackers. Oh, you heard about it? I've heard of him actually. Yeah. Yeah, there's a, it was really a great video in the the Xbox Underground. Right, right, right. And it's like mm -hmm. a mm -hmm. link of, the, of that video will be shown shortly. So, um, speaking of gaming, how did you, you know, get into it per se? So, I mean, definitely, uh, a nineties kid. So kind of grew up with games in the house. Uh, my dad was the one who originally showcased, uh, Miss Pac-Man to me, you mm. know, we used to go to like arcades and stuff like that. But then when we, uh, had a super Nintendo in the house, there's like a picture of like little five, six year old me sitting on the living room floor, just playing with a Super Nintendo playing. Who knows what it was? It could have been his Pac-Man. It could have been a uh, Mario was it? Uh, Jurassic Park, Mario. Yeah. yeah. All kinds of stuff. So, wow. That's weak. That almost goes into like the later things, but we'll, you know, we'll get into it later on. Um, mm -hmm. So speaking like on the same note from, uh, your YouTube channel, one of the things I've noticed is that the game game that you play a lot is like Dead uh Dead Side, True Stalker, and many army games. And especially I realized I believe like you're in the service. And I was wondering like when you were playing these games, were they like very similar to like what you had to do in the service? Well, not specifically what I had to do. I was a mechanic in the army. Oh, okay. um, but I did kind of start continuing the YouTube journey when I was in the army as well, too. Right. Um, I remember like just trying to make videos as much as I can uh, whenever I had time to, which is, again, really tough to do. Yeah. Um, but that's when I bought my first like Elgato 
uh, to try to record off the Xbox and stuff like that. But mm. um, I like when it comes to those types of games, um, some of them are either very realistic, like Squad or Arma and stuff like that. And okay. I would, you know, do a lot of like military simulation style stuff there. Yeah. Or I'm also a big fan of like that Eastern European survival genre, like yeah. Stalker or Dead Side or DayZ as well, too. Um, so, yeah, it kind of just somehow fell into my lap and been hooked ever since. That's great to hear. Um, Speaking on the same note, like when, you know, you record, I'm sorry, record when you record the game footage, like what program you use to record the footage and do you also like also when you edit your videos what program do you use to edit for your you know your youtube channel yeah so i still i use obs studio um okay yeah. to record <laughs> and stream yeah it's kind of just the the standard i guess when it comes to content right. creation yeah yeah uh, i did try like you know streamlabs obs for a while i did also for but, but like the early days of my youtube channel i would say like you know like quote unquote early like 2018 2019 All i was right. using uh <laughs> nvidia's uh shadow play a mm. lot so it, it was mm. easy for me to just click a button and it'll just record everything but i didn't have the editing power behind it because everything was all like one audio track i didn't right, have it was know, just in real time like live streams. exactly yeah. so then when i did obs i figured out how to separate audio tracks and stuff like that and then for editing people might find this kind of surprising Everyone kind of uses, you know, DaVinci or, or or Adobe Premiere Pro. Right. I'm still using Sony Vegas. Okay. Like an old version of it. And the I just old school haven't. Version. Yeah. Yeah. I just haven't upgraded since and I'm used to it. And I still, you know, people always compliment me on my edits. I'm like, that's cool. If only you knew. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the, the I guess if it, makes you feel, oh, sorry. if it works, it works. And for me, right. I, I just, I know I need to put more time. I did use Premiere Pro for a couple of videos. Mm. just to get uh, used to it yeah uh, but i also just don't want to pay for it uh yeah, myself but da vinci uh has really uh showed me that you know it's a one-time payment plan and you have it forever so i might start looking at switching over to da vinci okay i mean if it makes you feel better you know a lot of these episodes even the first episode of the podcast i've been doing it on iMovie which will be like showing off and it's just like yep here we are in the oh, editing dude, room windows windows movie maker was the first thing i ever used you know same so. here same here man mm -hmm. literally like and this was before i was even like thinking of stuff like this it was like i was it was 2007 yeah it was yep yeah, me and you both yeah i did window movie mm -hmm. maker too and even um previously what i did was like the vhs the vcr i was using like that and be like oh let me just get some stuff off of that yep yeah. Window movie. Uh, yeah. yeah, we both kind of have the same stuff. So, like, when did when was the first time you used that? By the way, uh, on that uh, again, that was at the Windows Movie Maker. I think same time around like high school as well too. Okay. Uh, when like Windows, uh, XP, Windows Vista, stuff like yeah, that around that yeah. time. So yeah, yeah, that was that was. I think that was the one we have. It's hard to tell because it's like the two thousand seven version of it. But yeah, I think it was like around the same type of thing. And I would mm -hmm. like, you know, even burn disc and be like, yeah, this is the video I made and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. They used to be at bring disc and Those show were it so to much certain people. To and... menus. <laughs> oh, uh -huh. Fire. And just be like, yeah, <laughs> I, I did. And Bringing it's, up you know, memories, man. As explained from previous episodes and stuff, it was uh, I would mix my favorite stuff, which is, you know, one of the had its 25th anniversary at Adnetti. And I would mm -hmm. just put it on other stuff and be like. Yep, that's the video I did. And, like, I tried to do it on YouTube, but, you know, story of that is, like, copyright was, like, we ain't we ain't down with that. So I had oh, to yeah. switch it up. Even when I put the copyright stuff, it's, like, yeah, nah, nah. It's the, twice, and it's, like, this is, like, uh, not this channel, not this channel. This is, like, a different channel altogether. But the different one, the main one that I usually do, this is, like, fourth time and. We're still going, which is really good. Yeah, I'm, I'm this so, is my this, this is actually one, my second channel still. as well too. Yeah, wait, what? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, this is also my second channel as well too. Like I really? originally had one back in like 2011, so like that, but I deleted it. Same. So. <laughs> I had yeah. It was 2011, but it's like for my case, it was like 
ran off and then even i came back in 2000 you know that story so <laughs> okay so speaking of which of editing and stuff like that one thing i've noticed from like our connection is that me you and jay we all three of us we have really something one thing that's really in common we all went to full cell so on that note i was like wondering what did you what was your major in full cell yeah, so originally, uh, this is like 2017 when I got out the army. I yeah. uh, before I even got out the army, I was already like enrolled, ready okay. to go. So when I got out, and it was originally for uh, game design. Mm. So I did that for like three months and realized this wasn't for me. I wanted to more play video games instead of make them. Um, especially when math came around, I wasn't ready for that. Uh, uh, like so I sw- ended up switching. Yeah. yeah, dude, I hate math. So I ended up. Yeah, I ended up switching to uh, film uh, okay. for a while. So I did that. I uh, did uh, film from 2017 to 2018. Mm. And then I had my son around that time yeah. uh, in April. So that and then just everything, you know, getting ready to move. It was a lot of stress. I was like, you know what? Let me stop school for a bit. Okay. Uh, but I, I did notice towards the end of like my film stuff. Uh, a lot of my friends and they were moving to a degree program called media communications. Okay. Media. Yeah. 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 And I remember the first time I got, uh, it was like 2017, uh, towards like between 2017 and 2018. Um, actually it might've been like December time actually. Um, cause it was right before hall of fame. Yeah. And I got invited to something called a Friday blend. Okay. Um, which is when all the, the entire degree program comes together and they work on projects together. And oh, that yeah, was my first time I ever got to that. see. Yeah, yeah. That was my first time I got to see MCBS at, at, at its current stage, which, again, it was a big, like, the classroom was packed, but it was still way smaller than what it is now. I mean, I think <laughs> it, it's changed now, you know, the it's pandemic much, yeah, and stuff like yeah. that. But um, what was it? I, I was like, yeah, okay, because I went into the room and everyone was working on the Adobe Suite. I yeah. was like, man, you guys are working on Photoshop. You guys are working on Premiere. You guys are working on Audition. I movie. I yeah. want to do this. Like, I yeah. like, I like film. I like making the short films and documentaries and editing that. Mm. But it's more. I'm more on set. Yeah. Than I want it to be more behind a computer. Right. Right. Oh, the editing. You know, side. and actually doing you. the edit, doing the editing side exactly. So I was like, all right, yeah. let me let me switch when I come back. And 2019 came around. I was like, all right, let me start getting the process back to 2019. I want to come back for media communications. And then I started that program. That's I started the the what was it? The journey back in December of 2019. Yeah. Three months later, pandemic happens, everything shuts down. I'm waiting. I was like, all right, well, I'll wait for the two weeks, they said. Right. And two then years took later, longer. yeah, yeah. <laughs> two years later, I'm finally back in campus. Uh, mm. and I uh just recently got my bachelor's in media communications. I would say about what in last year, 2023, May, around that time. Okay, yeah. congrats, man. Yeah, Especially thank you, thank since you. uh yeah, I've also graduated like last year too within uh recording arts and uh if I remember correctly, February and um even like I said during the pandemic, I was in film and I graduated like in May of 2020. So uh, mm-hmm. we were both <laughs> so. Oh, we, so wait, you were in film too and left as well? I didn't leave. I actually completed it in uh May. Like I was in there from uh, oh, got you October of 2017, and then I graduated in May. The thing I was doing, I guess, if it feels like it was like a long time, even for the other one, I was doing like the one one month program, which is like I just take a class. Yeah, like, that's yeah, what that's if true. it feels like it was that long, it's like that. That was that was it. That's true. Re- that is a re- yeah. That is a big. That is a big reason why it would take a little bit longer. But yeah. I mean, still, that's that's still faster than traditional college, anyways. Right, right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so now we're moving on to the other part of the segment of the podcast, which is. I've now changed it for these years coming, and I believe we'll stick with this now, is the first and inspirational. So, a little earlier, a little while back, a few minutes ago and stuff, we were talking about YouTube. So, I was wondering, what was the first time you saw YouTube, and what inspired you to, you know, start a platform on YouTube? 
Oh, oof, that's an interesting question. I got to think back far ahead because, yeah, I was definitely in the early days of YouTube when, like, it first showed up, mm. you know, here seeing these videos come up and, and seeing how viral some of these went. And viral back then was way different. I mean, like, if a yeah. video hit 100,000 views back then, that was viral. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, now it's like you got to hit at least 10 million to go viral, you know. Yeah. Feels. But, um, yeah, it was... I started, you know, seeing people make videos and I always was a fan of just making videos myself. Right. Even if back then I was, uh, I were uh, taking pictures. I was taking pictures of like stop motion toy <laughs> soldiers, you know, and I was making little shorts and with my toys and stuff like that. That's, and, yeah. Um, oh, that's nice. You know, man. so then I was like, I made videos with that. And then I really wanted to, you know, I, there's no other way for me to post it other than, show to to my parents so then once youtube came out um i was like all right let me let me see what i can do show everyone else yeah yeah with this but again i was i was still like you know this is like high school middle school time and it was i didn't we didn't have a really good you know home computer Mm. um i have a computer of my of my own the windows (laughs) you know so yeah windows 95 and up. that was pretty much and then like it took them forever dude it took him forever to like upgrade my dad my dad was just like not on top of it he was more of a music guy so like when it comes to computers like i just need to access my email that's it you know um i just yeah so but then but with me it was, you know, I had to kind of like i was the one that like uh, updated their os and stuff like that yeah yeah um but I think because it's an interesting journey because there was a lot of people that inspired me. Um, yeah. Like, you know, old school, like, uh, my gosh, uh, Toby Games. Okay. Uh, oh, I heard of You know, uh, uh, back then. And then, uh, of course, just I'm trying to think of like, I mean, old, even older school PewDiePie, like his first like yeah. amnesia uh-huh. playthroughs <laughs> yeah. and stuff like that. You know, of course, yeah. everyone knows that him now. Right, um, right. You know, and then um, so seeing that, and, and I wanted to make some let's play stuff like that. Seeing Rooster Teeth from Ooh. the ground up and stuff like that. You know, mm. so um, I was like, all right, I want to get into this. And then uh, again, this is like 2011, 2012, 2013. Yeah. I, I started making the channel. So I started making like little vlogs with my phone at the time, and I posted videos. And I was like, subscribe to the channel, guys. And I had this like really weird. Um, saying my wife makes fun of me all the time now. I used to say, uh, in the beginning of each video, okay. bam, it was W H A B A M, bam. And I, used to, I, I don't know why I said that. I thought every every YouTuber needed like their own specific catchphrase, right? Um, you know, it was and called then, bam. What bam? What bam? Oh, yeah, W H A B A M, and it was spelled like I spelt it like capital W lowercase h capital a like how like you know old xbox yeah gamer tech xbox days, you know <laughs> so yeah. i did that and then um but then i joined the army in 2013 so i kind of mm. put that on pause yeah um, you know <laughs> and then i saw <laughs> no no but then i saw like level cap and uh and matimio and guys doing battlefield videos so i was like i really want to mm. get into some battlefield games um and that was kind of like the main journey of me starting YouTube. And then after the army um, was when I, in 2017, I started, I kept going back um, to maybe making videos, but I started uh, Twitch streams on in 2017. Okay. And then I was like, you know what? The only way for, for my Twitch channel to grow is to make content first and then yeah. go from there. Okay. So I just said, you know, let me go full in on YouTube. And I kind of really haven't stopped since 2018. Nice, man. I would say I would say I found it around the same time. I know at the time I was like in like, you know, first to third grade at the time. And um, I know at first I was like looking at like music videos and stuff. And then it was just like, wait, you can make stuff on here. Like, I think I figured it out by 2000, probably 2008 or 2009. And it was like, yeah, I'm like. Oh, I make stuff too. And then, you know, the journey of what we were talking about earlier, that's on there. So um, one thing before we get to the other things are, um, are you, do you like, are you big on music? Do you, would you know, do you, do you like music a lot or? I mean, yeah, I listen to a bunch of different things. Uh, like if you check out my 
Spotify, you know, liked music, it's like it'll, it'll go from like anything crazy from uh some you know Metallica, and then it'll like the next song will be Marvin Gaye, and then the song after that will be Lincoln Park, and then the next song after that will be Dead Mouse. Like I just listened to, and the next song would be Luke Bryan. After that, I listen to everything. So would everything from say, and if, oh, everything and people are like oh I listen to everything except country. No, I listen to country too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was yeah. uh. Would you say would you like to make music anytime soon? On that note, or ooh, I don't know about making music. Uh, I'll help with the music video, but I'm All not. Right. You know, I did. I did play a couple instruments growing up. Um, ooh, I did. I played guitar for a little bit. I took hmm. some guitar classes. Wasn't really enjoying that too much, and then I took uh, drum classes, and that that was like my main, my main passion there. I I still have my old drum pad and drumsticks and stuff like that. Nice. And, so. Okay. Yeah. I, my family is very uh musically inclined, I guess you can say. Like my brother knows how to play piano. My dad has been singing his entire life and has played on huge stages and stuff like that. So is your dad like me, a musician? Just, like do does any- Yeah, so he uh he uh is originally from uh Puerto Rico, so I'm Puerto Rican as well too. Okay. Um and he played in a lot of big salsa orchestras, big bands. Okay. Uh, either you know, and then he made his own band and stuff like that, and was playing all over Florida and stuff like that. So, mm, yeah. What was his? What was, oh, sorry. what was his stage name? I mean, it's his name, you know, Ivan Melendez. You know, or he had a DJ name at like parties. Okay. And his DJ name was like DJ Mofongo, which Mofongo. is like a food. Okay. Uh, Everybody, food watch out for know. that. <laughs> you know. So. Um. So on that note. I would say, okay, I'd say this is that was a good bit of music. So now we're going to move on to something a little different. We're still on the same subject, but a little different. So it's like, I wonder if you've ever seen, like, what was, like, the first anime you saw and what was an anime that made you kept watching anime, if, if you do, of course. Got you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't really watch anime too much now. I know me, my wife loves Studio Ghibli movies. Mm. Um. So, you know, we like I think actually funny enough, we're going to Megacon uh coming up here soon. Oh wow. Uh, so it'll it'll be my first ever me and her uh will it'll be our first convention. Mm. Um and she's huge into reading mangas now on her phone and stuff <laughs> like that. Um and then for me, I mean, I wouldn't say like I wasn't like into like traditional anime. I saw a little bit of Yu-Gi-Oh, Dragon Ball Z growing up, Pokemon, stuff like that, the traditional yeah. stuff. I I was really more into like Samurai Jack a lot okay. too. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, tr- like actual, like, like, like straight. I know, like my my cousin, uh, um, uh, who's about the same age as me. He's, we're literally like ten days apart. Um, okay. he would read actual, like, from Japan mangas, reading from right to right. left. Oh, from yeah. Know? Like no you know, translation, it would be like the actual. Like... He would learn Japanese, yeah. No, he would legit learn Japanese just for that. So he mm. was, you know, more into that. And I learned a little bit from him. Um, you know, uh, seen uh, what was it uh, in Yuyasha or yeah. um, what was it? Uh, uh, you know, Gundam. I was also like anything with science fiction. I would be yeah. into. Uh, so anything mech wise, I was like, yeah, that's that's my jam for sure. I can um, feel that. Uh, but yeah, so, I mean, I don't really watch anime too much now. Um, it's kind of just whenever I see something cool, I, if anything, I'm, I'm just watching Studio Ghibli movies with my wife and just having fun with that. And then my son loves, uh, Ponyo and stuff like that. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. so um, one of the second to last questions of the first and inspirational is, uh, one thing I've noticed like with your stuff and even some posts of your IGs and Twitter, it often feels like it's like a cinematic like type of thing. So on that note, I was wondering what was, if you could remember the first movie you seen and what was a movie that inspired you to kind of like with your editing journey, like to kind of make the, uh, like a cinematic universe for your channel, you know? Yeah, no, for sure. Man, I don't know if you can see kind of back behind me, there's a little stormtrooper, uh, action figure oh yeah i see it now type thing. that was originally from because uh in the movie rogue one there's like a little like uh death trooper that's holding like a stormtrooper doll mm-hmm. so yeah if you can't tell already star wars is like my my biggest inspiration for you know cinematic wise i remember like making cinematics using uh 
Star Wars Empire at War. It's like a it's All like a right. real time strategy game. Nice. Um making stuff like that. But um yes, I grew up watching a bunch of movies. Um everything from again like the major Star Wars movies to uh smaller cult classics and stuff like that. Um oh man. What was what was the second part to that again? Because I remember. Oh, you said and, it was, uh, yeah. I think I think you already you cleared it. You cleared it actually. So um, you cleared that part. So one of our last part of our first and inspirational is uh now with gaming. I believe you were saying like like Miss Pac Man and stuff like that a little earlier. Mm-hmm. What was like an inspirational game that made you be like I'm gonna keep playing gaming and stuff like that. You know, I mean, Halo is the first one to come to mind for sure. You know, seeing, I mean, if I go back further, I think, uh, uh, Goldeneye as well, too. That was like my okay. first FPS game, and then like Star Fox 64, and yeah, and, you know, and then, uh, what was it, Star Wars Racer and Rogue Squadron, um, stuff like that on the, the Nintendo 64. Um, when it comes to like the 3D games, of course, there's like other 2D games like Mario and stuff like that that I enjoy as well too. But yeah, uh, the yeah Halo for sure. Seeing the work that went into that game, then Halo Two, Halo Three, just continuing moving on, um, just really inspired me to, uh, just stay within the genre of gaming, um, and also just playing. I mean, I, there were so many games I played growing up. I mean, like right. from Halo to Anything Star Wars related, uh, Star Wars Battlefront. Um, oh my gosh, man! I'm just you know, and then of course like Battlefield came into the picture as well. I I think the first one I was Battlefield um, Two, which was uh, Modern Combat, which was like after 1942. Yeah. Um, and then I just kept playing Battlefield since then. So everything from 2142 to Battlefield Three, Four, Five, One. Just, you know, they all kind of jump around numbers and stuff like that. But, yeah, that's kind of just uh, mainly the games I in- were inspired me. And then recently now, of course, is Stalker and and a lot of indie games, uh, a lot of early access games that I cover right. um, on the channel. It's kind of just what is my the, the bread and butter now. I'm going to also say on that note, they've sponsored you, too, like for, you know, your channel. And yeah, stuff well. definitely. It's it's interesting to to see that side. Uh, I've my eyes have been opened more to the marketing side, to the development side. I've seen other YouTubers get in, start dipping their toes into game development, everything yeah. from uh, Operation Harsh Doorstop, which was. Uh, made by Blue Drake Forty Two and his team, Drakeling Labs. Again, that they're, they're he was a YouTuber first, doing project reality videos, right? Then started making his own game, and then you have another YouTuber named Big Fry who, uh, who basically like you know he was a v- very critical of early access games. People know him more for that, uh, right. but he's like, you know what? I'm gonna make my own game, mm. and you know kind of like prove to people and stuff like that as well too but it's, it's it's a single player game it's called transients but he already had a demo come out and then now you have a uh, level cap coming out looking to make his own space game funny enough so it's like a bunch of different youtubers are like dipping the toes in also seeing how many games that are coming out that are being made by one developer oh is insane like to see the work that they put into it but how easily accessible game engines are nowadays everything from unreal to kado unity is still there but i know a lot of people are upset at unity with their recent like you know pricing that they had to do for like i think every like every game install is like an extra five cents per person it's it's so dumb but yeah but regardless it's still like everyone is is you can go make a game right now a a prototype and get your idea out there and then you know, eventually work on your own craft and stuff like that. So, yeah. All righty. Now, now we're down to like our final, final question for this interview. So from what we were talking about earlier from your socials of like, I remember earlier you were saying like you were vlogging and also like live streaming and stuff. And I was wondering if, uh, that's going to be like more of your plans for like this year, like for your channel of like, what, what's the next stuff that's uh, going to be coming up for your channel this year for the start of this year. 
Yeah, well, I definitely have kind of already implemented some of this stuff where, like, I do a live stream consistently on YouTube. Okay. Um, so that's where mainly my audience is. Um, the original goal before 2023 was to hit 5,000 subs. Mm. And now I'm actually sitting at 6,900. Just, nice. just recently a few days ago so now it's you know the goal for i mean just this year in general is to hit at least ten thousand. see where that goes after that um but i kind of already started some of the goals like i started my own merch got that mm. going um my website's been going decently well um i got a couple games coming out this year that i'm looking forward to covering uh we got stalker 2 we got another indie game called gray zone warfare Mm. um and i say indie but it's still pretty like it's a decent sized team like 50 plus but um they got it's early it's gonna be early access and then really just focus more on some like virtual reality stuff as well too um get back into making some of that content as well but really just just continuing what i'm doing now just consistently uploading right, every three to four days as much as i can and then stick into that schedule stream and then the channel should just hopefully continue growing from there. So. Nice. And uh, for one of our last note is like, if we want to like come and contact you, like how do we, you know, how do we reach you? Like, how do we find you? Yeah. So uh, easiest way probably would be either or well, easiest ways I should say would be either through Twitter or uh gmail my email which is always linked in uh, my youtube channel um okay. if you want you can also message me on discord but discord can be kind of uh iffy because it lets people sometimes it'll, it'll let you message or it won't it depends yeah. on if i have the permissions on stuff like that um also i've been getting a lot of weird messages on there lately a lot of like scam stuff yeah. but uh yeah so twitter um at blue the robot and then um uh, just my email pretty much Nice. And with that, I have to say thank you so much for being here. And now we have to say our farewell. See you later. Bye, everyone. I hope you all enjoyed this interview of Blue the Robot. And for the shout outs list, we have got a new subscriber, The Reaper, Gene Stovall, Once Upon a Melody. Jamie Snowden, and What's In My Head podcast. Now, coming up next for my next episode coming in a little bit later in time, but soon as possible at the same time, is Blurt City. And you know, until next time, guys, I'm going to see you later. Talking